Well, my feeling is that the market yesterday was battered by Bullard because – we, we did get the uh, very sharp rise in CPI, but at the same time, we then had his surmising that we would end up with a one percentage point increase in Fed funds rate, not in 12 months, as most are anticipating, but rather in four months. And so today, however, I really believe that the action is, is more predicated on worries over Russia invading Ukraine, and that's really what's driving the prices today. So how do you deal with that, Sam, as an investor? Because, you know, these geopolitical events are, are a little bit tricky to figure out what they could mean for global growth and markets. Oh, absolutely, Sarah. Well, I actually think that this, uh, if we do see an invasion of Ukraine by Russia, it actually would be a short-lived event. Uh, history tells us, looking at these kind of military and terrorist activities since World War II, that we end up with a, um, a fairly mild one-day decline, about 1 percent or more. But then the total decline is no more than a mild pullback, 5 percent, uh, and that we end up having a round trip that takes about 30 days if you exclude Pearl Harbor. Um, so basically what I find is that it'll make headlines, but it really will not affect bottom lines because it will not lead to a global recession. Even putting aside geopolitical tensions, Greg, the tech trade looked wounded. And for the tech trade to be wounded, that's not a good thing for the broader markets, obviously. We've got a lot of the, the big cap tech stocks already, you know, technically below their 200-day moving average. We've got other ones, big ones, Microsoft, Alphabet. Alphabet gave up all its post-earnings gains, is now below the 200-day moving average. I mean, th this is a market that, that looks a little damaged here. It does look damaged, and where I disagree with Mike and Sam is I think that there's another leg down. At the end of the day, when we look back at mid-January, all of the fears, all of the poignant factors are either intensifying and certainly all present. And so more liquidity is going to be taken out of the system than we anticipated. Yes, we had a taper. Yes, we did hear talk about uh, reducing the balance sheet. But the yield curve is also flattening. And so what that means is that banks are going to be disincentivized to loan. They borrow on the short end and loan at the, loan at the long end. And as that spread compresses, they will be disincentivized to grow those books. Secondly, in terms of the interest rate hikes, on the top of a very hot inflation number, which I suspect will continue to be hot for a number of months, on top of a hot jobs number, I think the Fed's hand is all but forced here. And I think we're going to see 50 bips in March. That is not priced in. Consensus is not there yet. And so on the back of that, yes, the tech trade is broken, but I think it will bifurcate. I think that we'll start to separate those companies that has shown sustainable demand in the face of macro factors that present a headwind for most. I think that that will happen in the Dow and the S&P as well, where we'll look for those companies that are more insulated to the top line and bottom line challenges that we're going to face and that the market will start to focus on in the next few months. Just wanted to point out, the Russian ruble, which we showed you a moment ago, it's the dollar spiking against Russia's currency, having a huge drop lower today. In fact, it's worst daily performance in terms of percentage drop since March 2020 at the height of, of coronavirus. Obviously, the concern here is that Russia's economy has a lot to lose, Sam, when it comes to steep sanctions that President Biden has threatened, potentially locking its banks out of the international system. How, how do you think about potential global growth spillover effects of, of that? Well, I think that we are still looking for more than 4 percent GDP growth globally, uh, really driven by uh, the U.S., but also uh, other areas. So certainly that is dramatically lower than the near 7 percent that we got for the final read for 2021. Uh, but I also think that it's, that's probably a di an additional reason why we might not end up seeing Russia invade Ukraine because of the consequences, uh, either that or Putin then just looks to us as the bad person to try to um, cement ties with his own people. So uh, I would tend to say, again, that uh, while there could be more pressure to the downside, retesting the late January lows, uh, I think that usually um, military activities end up representing good buying opportunities, not reasons to bail.